What's this? I ordered a Les Paul and got a box. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So, we get to document a scam as it's happening. This is a first for the unboxing series. I have a few other videos where I just did it through myself and let you guys know the outcome, but this is a scam happening right now to me. Let's go ahead and hop on the computer and let me tell you the story. So it was about a week ago, I saw this listing on Reverb. Gibson Les Paul Studio 1998 Black with an asking price of $500 plus $75 shipping. That's a really good price for a studio, but not too good to be true. Like you actually do find these guitars out there occasionally. That's a quick sale price for a studio like this with a full gloss finish. So I took a look at the photos to do a risk analysis. You know, everything on here looked okay. Super amateur photos, but usually the greater risks are the greater rewards. The only thing that made me kind of leery of this listing is there isn't a single photo of the back of the guitar. So I thought what was gonna show up would be like a headstock repair or some sort of damage to the back. So what I did, I tried to haggle a little bit more than free shipping, $400 plus 75 shipping. And that offer was counted with 425 plus 75. I kind of hummed and hawed over that price because I could realistically expect to sell that guitar for about $750. So after you take out the fees and shipping, I would be at roughly 620. Is it really worth all this risk to maybe make $100? Since it had a gloss finish and a nice hard shell case, I decided to go for it. And as soon as I click that button, I get this message. I'll accept your offer. Ah! <laughs> so I told him, darn, I should have waited a few minutes longer. <laughs> then after I had paid, I got this message. It said, give me a few minutes. I'll go get it shipped. Something about that slightly rubbed me the wrong way because he was trying to get that shipped way too fast. But then again, there's people like me who instantly ship this stuff as soon as it's purchased. So about 12 hours go by and then he sends me this. Customer drop off confirmation. And it has this really strange tracking number. And in my head, I thought, okay, maybe that's the tracking number for the drop off. So I wasn't too alarmed by this weird FedEx tracking number. And sure enough, after a few days, it did get logged within their system. And he let me know that on the 3rd at 8 p.m. Once I had a tracking number, I knew this thing would show up eventually. It's located in Auburn, Washington, and I'm in Ohio. That's a good four to five business day transit time. If you've been following my channel, I was actually in the hospital for the past three days as my wife was having our third child. So I was not there on Friday to sign for this package. And strangely enough, this package was automatically redirected to my local Walgreens. I have never had FedEx not just reattempt to deliver it the next day. Something was strange with that. So today, the day I'm recording this episode, I picked it up at about 3 p.m. on Sunday. But going to Walgreens, I thought I was there to pick up a guitar package. So when they opened up their little storage locker and I saw this small box, I was like, well, did my wife order something? Because I wasn't 100% sure at this point in time if this was the transaction that was meant to be picked up. So I got home to verify the numbers and sure enough, it's for this order. Now that I'm at home, I thought I would just message the seller to tell him that, hey, the jig's up, I know you're trying to scam me, or maybe did you send me the wrong package? But then I got this message, Mike F cannot receive messages at this time. You check out his profile and it says account disabled. I'm not sure if Reverb disabled his account or if he did it himself, but I reached out to Reverb to let him know that, hey, this order was most likely a scam because this box is clearly not a guitar. And that's the one thing I like about Reverb. You can always get a hold of somebody within regular business hours. And heck, this was even on a Sunday outside of business hours. And they were quick to go to their manager about this to figure out what's going on. And essentially what they said is, I'll have to wait till tomorrow till the main team gets in. But that's completely covered and I have no worries. But that just leaves one question. What is in this box that was sent to me? So what on earth could possibly be in this box? It is terribly beat up and it appears to be a box that was used on Amazon because you can see some of the old Amazon tape right there to, you know, patch it up from being mutilated from something. It's just been beat up everywhere. But the box appears to have been something called Rockland and it was a limited edition something out of 3000. 
And that's kind of what had me questioning if this was actually a different package that I was expecting. Because a company had contacted me about a children's guitar that they wanted me to do a review on. And I think they might be sending it, but I haven't heard from them in a long time, so maybe not. But I thought, hey, well, this almost lines up with that. But if I had to guess what's in this mystery box, it sounds like there is like a gallon of water. Which is kind of scary at the same time. They probably just put water in there to weigh the package down. But as we're opening this, why would they even send something at all? It's so they have a valid tracking number. Sometimes on eBay, you can get away with this scam as long as there's a package that was delivered. They won't actually care what was in it. That's when it gets tricky. It's a he says, she says type thing where who actually is telling the truth? I didn't send them a box with water in it. I sent them a Les Paul. So far, nothing too scary, thankfully. Looks like just some plastic. You got a little bit of uh, styrofoam there. More plastic. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared to be touching this stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this scammer at least has a sense of humor. Oh, cool. So I got a... I did get a guitar. He can't, he can legally say he sent me a guitar and not feel bad. But this is something you can get at the dollar store. <laughs> Guess it's technically a bass guitar. Doesn't Davey 504 play one of these? And to weigh the package down, is this lemonade or antifreeze? Ammonia. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's good for cleaning the bathroom. I can use that. We can do it with the kitchens and yeah. Huh. I wonder if there's actually a legal problem with shipping something like this. So I know sometimes when it's a hazardous material like this, it has to be labeled properly. So I guess it was technically a guitar unboxing after all. I don't know. Do you guys want to see a full review and demo 20 minute video of going? Oh my goodness. Look at that action and super bowed neck. Let me know in the comments section. Slap like. And as far as the rest of this stuff, it's just garbage. I think this has to be the most bizarre thing that I have ever had happen to me while buying and selling guitars. Speaking of packages I wasn't expecting, here's another one right here from Chicago Music Exchange. So about two or three weeks ago, I did a video on Chicago Music Exchange's new limited edition double cut juniors and specials. I just thought they were cool. I had a feeling I would hear from somebody from Chicago Music Exchange about it as like a thank you for making the video because it wasn't sponsored or anything. I just thought they were cool and I needed a somewhat easy video to do that day. But they reached out to me and said, hey, send us your name, address, and all that other good stuff. We want to send you a little something for that. So here's what we got. Looks like a nice Chicago Music Exchange large t-shirt, $14.99 value. I don't know how they sell these things so cheap because I, mean, I can't even get them at cost for $14.99, so they must have a really nice uh, manufacturer of these guys. Yeah, that's a cool little shirt. Chicago Music Exchange. Then they sent me this one, which isn't in a bag, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know, which one do you guys prefer? I think I like this one better because, I don't know, it's just words on a shirt. Seems a little bit more classic than a logo, but they're both cool. It's a nice little keychain. That Chicago Music Exchange. Looks like we got some stickers. Oh, another one of those. Thanks, CME. You know I'm a man of high fashion when all the clothes I wear are either my own brand or given to me by other companies. And I don't really have a proper guitar unboxing this week, but what I do have is this. I can share you a little tale of this. I traded the Ultra Telecaster for this Les Paul locally. I believe, if I remember correctly, is it a 2016 traditional? 
Yep, 2016 right there. And essentially, this is just an overhauled Les Paul traditional that's been brought up to almost historic specs. The guy really liked this guitar. He didn't really want to sell it, but he was looking to get into a Telecaster and he just loved the Texas T finish. He didn't think that he'd be able to find somebody willing to trade their brand new Ultra for something. But this ended up working out great because, you know, I'm more familiar with these Les Pauls than the Telecasters. And I know I'll definitely be able to uh, get, you know, a similar value out of this, probably even a little bit better. But essentially he's upgraded everything on this and overhauled it. So I believe he said these are the Faber parts. So you got the ABR1 style on here with the tailpiece. And he has a limited edition signed by Joe Bonamassa pickup in one of these. And I forget what the other one is. And he's got, I think he said the cream tone plastics on everything. So like that little stupid poker chip right here is like worth a hundred bucks or something crazy. So if you're into all that, you know, historical accuracy stuff and you want a nice looking little Les Paul traditional, you can hit me up about this one. Because I don't think I'm going to do a separate review on it. I don't know. Maybe I will. Just depends on the day and how much time I have. Things like that. But the other thing he said he had done to this is they rolled the edges of the fretboard at Sweetwater for like 150 bucks or something. And since we didn't have any really guitar unboxings today, I thought we would line up our boxers today. So this guy right here, we have to ship something in a gig bag. That's never super fun. But it's another super fast sale. It's the one we just talked about yesterday. It is the Les Paul CM. This took roughly 45 minutes to sell. It had 50 watchers within that short time frame. I listed it for $449 plus 50 shipping, so just slightly under 500 bucks. And with all those watchers, I was really tempted to raise the price by 50 bucks because it's, it still would have sold. But I wanted to pass this one on at a fair price. And I got this one in on a trade, so I didn't have tons of money in it or anything. But I was impressed with this little guitar. I'll be honest with you guys, I was kind of annoyed with everybody that kept gushing over these guitars. It's like, no, they're ugly, I don't like them. But once I realized that these are just those 2014 Melody Makers, that's when it was all coming back to me. I love those little things from 2014, the full-sized Melody Makers. And this is just a single one humbucker version of that. So cool guitars, very affordable, as far as the Gibson goes anyways. Next up on the pack and block, one of my favorite Les Pauls, especially from the modern era. I kind of regret not actually doing a review and demo on this one. The reason why I didn't though is because I've kind of done this guitar to death, but I mean, it's been about a year. So I think the next one of these I buy, I'll definitely do a modern review for it. The Buckethead Signature Les Paul. These things are awesome. Baritone scale length, 27 inches. You have the hot 496R500T, dual kill switch buttons here for stutter effects, which is a lot of fun. And you even have coil splitting on these. These are like some of the most massive sounding Les Pauls you can buy. They just make all other Les Pauls just sound like puny little toys. And that's why you kind of got to be careful playing one of these because you kind of get spoiled and used to them. I wish Gibson would do something similar to this, but make it not Buckethead in style. Just make oversized Les Pauls. Just a short run, that way people who don't understand Buckethead can still get in on this action, because these things are cool and they go for stupid money nowadays. And now we've got one last guitar to pack. Big shout out to Mr. Gold. I don't remember if I went into detail when I was unboxing the Pale Moon Telecaster, 
but the guy who I worked out the deal for this guitar on is like one of my oldest customers that I physically remember besides the Pat Rafferty I think is his name. And Pat was one of my first guys who liked my Facebook page and bought a 335 from me like one of the only 335s I've ever had. But Mr. Gold, he bought my perfect gold burst. It's just a perfect match made in heaven. And now he's getting this insanely beautiful Pale Moon Telecaster. I was a little bit upset with the amount of views this video got. I thought for sure it would be a big video, but it's kind of a, a medium video, kind of medium low. But I have no regrets doing the video on this because this is a beautiful example. They're not all going to be this beautiful, but hey, if you want to check them out at Guitar Center's website, you can. But once again, thank you Mr. Gold for making this all possible and I hope you enjoy this Telecaster and it appreciates in value as well as adds value to your collection. And now it's time to pick the winner of the Kahaya Gig Bag. Go ahead and put our link in here and see how many people entered for this colorful gig bag. And now we will see who is the lucky winner of another one of these gig bags. Congratulations! Make sure you check your comment within the next three days because that's where I will be contacting you. Unfortunately, I don't have any other sponsored giveaways for this episode, but who knows what we might get on a future episode. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. I hope you had a good time with the scam and all the other fun stuff we did today. But we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.